Temple or Michigan, which team will take the final opening at New Orleans and the final four? North Carolina, Kansas, and Kentucky are set. Here it's the one seed Michigan against the seven seed Temple. Never before have three number one seeds made it all the way to the final four. Billy Packer, Michigan to become the third today. What about this game? It could happen. It's a power team, Jim, and I think some of the keys that we're going to see in this basketball game today in our game analysis, tempo, tempo, tempo. And what we're talking about there, tempo likes to keep the game under 70. Michigan would like it over 85. The second thing is that Michigan high-low, even they're going against the zone defense today, look for Weber and Howard and high-low to cause problems for tempo. The next thing is sophomore pressure. How about the comments made by Jalen Rose and Chris Weber about the fact that it might not be any fun anymore? And then, of course, the empty bench at Temple, with the exception of Jason Ivey, it's kind of thin down there for John Chaney. Freshman Cunningham, Brunson, McKee for the Owls and the five softs from the Wolverines. Weber, Jackson, Howard, Rose, and King. And the officials, Larry Rose with Gene Mangi and John Moreau. Michigan 29 and 4 on the year. Only having been beaten by Duke, Iowa, and Indiana twice. Temple 20 and 12 at one time, 10 and 10 on the season. Michigan's road to the regional final through Coastal Carolina. Down 19 against UCLA, they prevailed in overtime. And then in a struggle, they knocked out George Washington. One of the ugliest victories in Michigan history, said Chris Weber. For Temple, they defeated the Big 8 tournament champions, Missouri, Santa Clara, and Vanderbilt on Friday night. Cunningham and Weber. Jim, one of the things fans are going to notice early is that Temple zone will not look anything like it was against Vanderbilt, where it really extended out. They'll be down in the box with four guys trying to keep their feet in the paint. And that means perimeter jump shots will be available. King on the perimeter, skips it over to Rose, and almost turned over. Jackson underneath, injected by Jones, and Temple coming up big defensively on the first possession of the game. Jones has showed us incredible quickness on both ends of the floor. There's a nice matchup. Rose kind of surprised me a little bit that Rose would be on McKee. Eddie Jones with a line drive, three-point three basket. Point the matchup man to man, Jim. Most teams have a hard time with Jones and McKee because you don't have people that size to go out and guard that such active people. But Michigan's blessed with King, Rose, and Jackson that can play men on the wing. Jones steals it from Jimmy King. Brunson over to McKee. Rebound to Weber. They start the break. Howard in the middle. Players on the wing. He finds King. King let it go early. Got two down for Michigan on the floor, so we get a five on three break. And Brunson takes it all the way, and it's five to nothing Temple. Jim Weber and King never got off the ground. Did we see that zone? Now watch him pack back in, keeping guys in the painted area. Howard in the lane for Michigan's first two. These teams met last year in the NCAA first round, and Temple down early by 14, came back to take the lead with five minutes to go before Michigan won by seven. Caleb Rose got that lead started with a three. And of course, that propelled Michigan. That was their first game, propelled them on the way to the Final Four. That was a year ago in Atlanta. Temple may be a little tired of getting to regional finals, Jim, and not getting a chance to advance. Lost to Duke in one and North Carolina in another in recent years. Howard blocks it. Petit is in the area. Gets a second chance. Petit underneath. And a basket. Hold on. The shot clock had expired. No basket. 
Well, Michigan knows all about that situation, Jim. The shot clock expiring because they have been lucky enough to beat that shot clock in their two huge wins, once against North Carolina and, of course, against UCLA, which is the win that got them here. Five to two, Temple. Rose on the baseline. If anybody could get this team going in the right direction, it's Jalen Rose. He's been relatively quiet in the NCAA tournament so far. You mentioned Temple, Billy, in the regional finals. 88 and 91 at the Meadowlands. And now for the third time in six years, a game away, John Chaney's first trip to the Final Four. See the straight man to man. McKee, three-point basket. Very pure on that one. Huh? The interesting to see how long Steve Fisher stays with that matchup before he will move either Jackson or Jimmy King over on McKee. Clever. We talked about the high-low, and there it was. Nobody in the United States runs the high-low any better when they get the ball in the hands of Howard and then down and low to Weber. A great finisher inside. Vincent Temple trying to get to the Final Four for Coach John Chaney for the first time, but the school went to the Final Four in both 56 and 58. Correct. Al Lear was the MVP in 56, and of course they lost, but he was the MVP, came in third, and then the great Guy Rogers, who had teamed with Lear earlier, was involved in taking the Final Four again. Jones. By King. And almost safe, but it comes to Petit, who uses the glass to extend the lead back to 10 6. Yeah, that young man made four four free throws, as remember the other day in the last 39 seconds. It really sealed it against him. Ray Jackson the fall away. Jimmy King up high. King flips it and hits the roll. Almost basket interference, but score the basket. King and Jackson, two guys that were so important with offensive rebounds on missed foul shots. Again, that made the difference in the GW game. Jimmy King's basket, 10-8 Temple. You can see how Temple's isolating, taking their two big men, putting Cunningham on the foul line to tee down low, and they're isolating one-on-one -on -one situations for McKee and Jones. That pass going. McKee thought he had a teammate behind him early. The Owls have buried a couple of threes, and they lead by two. Strongest schedules in the country. Well, you got the top two right here. Temple followed by Michigan. Temple has brought in freshman Jason Ivey. Three of the top six players for Temple are, in fact, freshmen. They are not very deep, this team. Then you can see now how small Temple becomes in this zone. I think that uh, Michigan can go ahead and get some weak side rebounding here because they are so small with Brunson on that side. Makes the interception here on the easy play. And Jones puts it away. The basket by Eddie Jones. Jones with eight points. He had 26 against Vanderbilt. Only eight in the first half of that game, 18 in the second. Again, packing down inside. Good dribble penetration by King. Jalen not ready for the jumper. Jackson misses his 10-footer. Back to Weber. Behind the back. Jackson caught underneath. No foul called. And it gets into the hands of Eddie Jones. Mount Brunson. And that was not a fancy pass in terms of trying to be fancy just to make a play. That was a great way to get that ball over there. Gives Weber a lot of credit. Creative pass. Ice cream. Again, is that isolation. Four players on one side of the court. The T doesn't take advantage of it. But T and the one. Then this young man came up big against Vanderbilt. 12 points, 10 rebounds. It was his third double-double of the year. And there they are hitting him down low. And in that isolation, Chris Weber goes for the fake. The T puts it up there nicely. That's Weber's first. Here's Petit, the 6'9 freshman from Dallas. I think that he he really fooled Weber because obviously Temple has not got gone to the team very often. Matter of fact, did not score a point against Santa Clara. Boy, Ivy is really banging with Howard. Somebody gets called. Yep. Call it on Ivy. Yep. And, and you know, you know what you want to say to him? You're playing with the big boys now. 
So let's see what happens. A little drawn inside. North Carolina has advanced to the Final Four, joining Kansas and Kentucky. And what Michigan needs to do here, Jim, is just to go ahead and keep moving the ball till they can find out what area of the floor Temple's given the shot. And it looks to me that the short jumper from the sidelines is going to be available. Now the reach in, this one on Eddie Jones. Mentioned uh, the three teams that have made it already to New Orleans. The three winningest teams in college basketball history in terms of total victories. North Carolina, Kentucky, Kansas. They'll all be at the Superdome. Incredible tradition there. Derek Riley who's just come in. Riley will head to the line for a three-point opportunity. Now we talked about the high-low. And of course, when Riley comes in, Michigan gives up very little, certainly nothing in height, but they get a great deal of experience off the bench in Eric Riley. Jason Ivey hit with his second foul, third against Temple, and three-point play by Riley. Michigan with that free throw already tying the number of attempts by Vanderbilt in the entire game on Friday night. The Commodores shot only one free throw. And here we go, Jones. Brunson and McKee, responsible so far in this tournament for 173 of their 209 points. 82% of their offense in the three wins. Good job by Jalen Rose and McKee. Now they get a switch. Brunson turned it over. And they didn't say it. That Michigan bench called for it. The team doubled up in trouble, stolen away by Jackson. And there again, Michigan showing how they come from the weak side to double the low post. McKee picks off the pass. Will they challenge? Pull back favorite. out. Brunson, three-point shot. The team trailing. Jimmy's coming up huge. First game this year that he came up this way was unfortunately for Temple their biggest loss, the Wake Forest game. Riley missed Howard that time. Flashes. Riley underneath. Puts it away. He has five off the bench. He's very difficult to catch because Jalen fired that ball down inside. Ivy setting a high screen. The Ivy hasn't gotten in the offense since he's come in. And we know how productive he's been so far in the tournament. 17 points, 19 rebounds off the bench. McKee fading away. Jones tries to save it. And, and does. does, in fact. Ivy, wow. Jones. So pure on that jump shot, even though that one didn't go in. Perfect form. Juan Howard, he likes that spot. Some great high-low passing for Michigan. They're finding the spots right now. Very seldom are you going to be able to have a guy that can step out there 6'10 and make that kind of a jumper. Good passing by Ralph. 16, 15 owls and a rejection. Well blocked, but it touched the back of the backboard, so it'll be Temple basketball, a break in the action, with the Owls leading by one. Final spot for the Final Four. And here's the flexibility of Temple's zone. Now, you notice in the painted area right there, Temple just has two players. The other three players are outside the area, two of which are beyond the three-point line against Vanderbilt. Today, against Michigan, you'll notice that four players will keep themselves inside the paint. Derek Petit had a big start to this game. Six points for the freshman. A nice double down inside there. It's helped with the other freshman, Cunningham, on the floor as Temple's returned to its starting lineup. Now Cunningham's not going to be an offensive threat. They're going to want him to screen to try to free up McKee. And there is a screen down in the baseline. McKee, three-point shot. Howard on the rebound. Rob Palenka, number three, is in for Michigan. Jim McKee seems a little hot in offensively today. It's one thing to be patient, but I think today he's got to be a little bit more forceful. Good save by Weber. We're talking about the Atlantic 10 player of the year. Very gifted offensive player, and he's 20 points per game score. Got to look to put it up a little more. Michigan taking some nice looks at this jump. Rose missing the trade. Look at the tournament numbers defensively for Temple. 
deals are incredible what they've been able to do. And we're talking about a team that plays zone. You think normally passive. They're not passive at all on the ball. See, McKee's getting clear out, but not in the shooting range. Well, now he's in the shooting range. There it is. He uses the glass this time. That's good. To open up a three-point lead. Very difficult, Jim. When you catch the ball, you want to be within your shooting range before you put it on the floor so you have your dribble left. The key perfectly executed it there. Weber driving. Oh, he took a big fall. I can't not believe that no whistle was called on that play. You can hear it from here. Yeah, certainly. Unbelievable. The Cunningham came right across his head. There are three referees out there. How can they not see that play? You'll see him come across the lane. That one is the shot going in, but when he came across the lane, he got swatted right across. You'll see it right here. Here's Cunningham. Watch this. Pow! He hit him right in the head knocked him to the floor. Well, there's one thing, no harm, no foul, and sometimes they say you can have contact without a foul, but that was without question a foul. Rose got by with a little push-off and a walk. Uh, here's Steele, Michigan, with a basket, can take the lead. There goes the double in that, in that zone. Palinka out here can find himself a hole, too, Jim. Pretty good outside shooter. take it and they have a push off against Riley so that temple defense really rattled them on that trip tremendous defense that time and McKee really made the great play when he came out so quickly on Palenka and there was Chris Weber shooting that jumper of his Jim and we talked about it the other day how flat it has become line drive wrist shot only under nine minutes to play in the first half temple 18 Michigan 17 Again, you can see they're playing only one half of the floor with a player at a time. Four men on one side of the floor, one on the other for a clear out. Here it comes again. Jimmy King, trying to stay with him. Floating and called for the charge. Nice job by Kalinka. Anticipated Jones was going to try to take it the distance. Second on Jones. Juan Howard comes back in. Michigan replacing Eric Riley. Good solid minutes by Riley. Couple of baskets, couple of blocks. Michigan's got to be getting up there, Jim. They've got 182 blocks, their all-time season record, which they set last year. And this year, they came into this game at 178. There's Vic in the ball game. Vic Karstarfen, who was at one time a starter at Temple, broke his leg in the seventh game this year, had to sit out 20 games. That broke the leg against Cincinnati in a game in December. Now has been a real emotional leader for the Owls. Jim, if it can get back to last year, he made five of nine threes against Michigan. Palenka. William Cunningham pulls down the rebound. You can see how the Starfin really has to struggle on that leg now. Heard it against Cincinnati, the school he originally attended before he transferred, but he certainly has none of the quick he at one time had. Michigan with another trip to take the lead. Jimmy King says, I'll take it. Long rebound to Polinka. Puts it back. Jawan Howard, great position. Oh, oh, look at Weber again. Get hit in the face. That's the second knockdown. He, he is getting very familiar with Cunningham's right hand. This time it does get called. Jawan Howard does. Uh, very unusual for him to miss putting one back in there. And here comes that hand down. Boy, Cunningham is unloading on him. I've seen some heavyweight fights that didn't have that many good shots in the first round. Hit him in the head wow. for a second time. Made sure he didn't get that shot up. John Cheney, 11 years at Temple. Before that at Cheney State, where he led them to the Division II National Championship. It's a break in the action. We'll be right back. 
Chris Weber back on his feet, and here's a look at the first knockdown, and no foul even called on the play. Jim, that is hard to believe that three officials could be watching the game and not call that a foul. He has since hit the floor again. There is no three knockdown rule in the West <laughs> Regional. Well, what? <one. laughs> that one was, and of course, one got called, so... Temple has led all of the way. There you see, surrounding the zone, Jimmy King trying some back screens for Chris Weber. Oh, Steele, the T read it all the way. Palenka a little too soft with the pass inside. He was back, Jim, and the man that was open was Juwan Howard. Five steals by Temple. Now it's clear out for Brunson. See, this is one-man basketball, four on one side of the floor, trying to clear out. Starkin will not be able to take Jimmy King. Runs it over Polinka. Sticks around and to the team. Another basket. Christian's having a great game. Twenty to seventeen, Temple. King. Also, Jim. Position great. underneath. Exactly. Position inside because. Right now, Michigan is not extending this with their outside shooting at all. People who have been effective against Cincinnati this year, like Van Exel from, I mean, against Temple, Van Exel from Cincinnati from the outside, Childress from Wake Forest from the outside, Carter Long hit seven threes against him for UAB. It takes that kind of outside shooting to extend his defense. Look at that, no help, and Brunson just drives in for the two. I see on the sideline, Bosco getting up. He could be the kind of guy who could extend his defense a little bit with some outside shooting. Van Exel, in fact, Billy hit eight threes against Temple. Right, eight for 15. It takes it. That shot is there. But look at now they've got five men in the paint. Here's what they need. Polenka. One rebound to Weber. And he's stolen. Has it stolen away by Brunson. Throws back. remaining in the first half. And they're gaining confidence with the zone by backing it way in, and Michigan hasn't shown that they can take any shots from the top of the key. There's one for Jimmy King. Got to make those. And he got it. Jimmy King he led the team in three-point shooting last year, second to Bosco for the Wolverines this year. Both years over 40%. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, this zone has an entirely different look than the one against Vanderbilt. He's got to take advantage of what's there. For Vanderbilt, it was an inside game, which they didn't have any size. For Michigan, it's an outside game, which they've got to hit some threes. Starfin getting some minutes. With Palenka on McKee, if they can swing the ball over here for McKee, I think he can take Palenka one-on-one. -on -one. Got to beat the shot clock. Rebound to Rhodes. Never found a good matchup for Temple on that, that exchange. Top of the key, another three for Michigan, and they're within one. And what that forces John Cheney to do is to sit on that sideline and say, okay, look, how many am I going to let him make before I adjust the zone a little bit to play tougher on the ball at the top of the key? And I'd say one more to make it his attention. A block against the Wolverines. Time. Jim almost had a chance to win that thing at the buzzer on a dunk. Similar play this past year, remember, with Western Kentucky, Louisville. Louisville had a chance and missed the dunk, but in this particular case, North Carolina dodged the bullet. Bosco in, Jackson has returned. Our Starfin goes out. The last round was against Jawan Howard. Julian King now into the Temple lineup for the first time. Number 11. See if he comes with instructions to change the look of his own a little bit. Bosco McKee, tough matchup for Bosco. Run. 
Brunson. Sophomore guard who took over as the starter when Kar Starfin broke his leg in December. Rose on the drive, draws the foul. Boy, Cunningham lets you know that that's his territory when you go through there. Galen picking up the foul. There's no such thing as a ticky-tack foul against <laughs> William Cunningham, is there? <laughs> You'll see, he's looking at the ref like, hey, I didn't do anything here. Watch this. Boom, I've got your face. Wow. <laughs> hey, if I'm only going to get five of them, I'm going to make the most of them. <laughs> well, he's one ahead of the game in the one that wasn't called. Rose will shoot a couple. talking at the press conference yesterday, talking about the pressure that's been applied to this team. We were fun-loving new kids on the block last year. Now we're supposed to beat everybody by 20 or 30 points. We're supposed to be super human. Jim, I think that is the biggest opponent that you can have, is that feeling of, of having enjoyment in playing. The last year they did, this year it's been tough. Temple basketball when we come back. The Owls have never trailed in this game. Temple points off a turnover 10 to 2, and Rick Brunson, sophomore from Salem, Massachusetts, who almost transferred to Boston College last summer, leads the way with nine points. Jim, he's doing the job offensively today. He was a little quieter, obviously, against Vanderbilt, but the thing that was really important to me in that game is he had no turnover against a very tough Vanderbilt defense. He did a good job as a field general. And today he's looking for a shot a little more. Under three minutes to play, first half, Temple by four. We were out on the floor during warm-ups, and Brunson came over and said, uh, let me tell you, we are ready. Well, Jim, at the top of the show, we talked about Temple Tempo. If you look up at the score right now, it looks like the kind of game going to be played in the 70s if it gets to that. So Michigan has got to figure out a way to start forcing a little bit more action. Once it gets the pass to McKee, and scores inside. And you can't get action going if you allow a team to take 35 seconds off the clock and then convert inside. Ray Jackson stuff for Cunningham out of the pack is Brunson. Nice patience by McKee. What a well coached ball club, huh? Yes, indeed. And a three out of two to total to open up to nine, 32 23. There they are, everybody down in the paint. Bosco what they bring him in for. Great offensive rebound. He missed it, but Riley tips it home. Riley was seven off the bench. Now, you notice there's a different type of blocking out assignment in the zone. It's not a matter of putting your body on a person, but surrounding that area down inside. King, with that explosive ability of his, went right through the temple blockout people. The seventh seed in the West, leading by seven. Is it the highest seed that Michigan's had to play, Jim? Huh? Well, you look at, really, the way it broke out of the brackets. If somebody told you before the tournament that Michigan would have to go through Coastal Carolina, UCLA, George Washington, and Temple, I think everybody would have said they went in in a walk. Exactly. Georgia Tech out of there. Of course, Arizona out of there early. But since Coastal Carolina, it has been good easy. And here's an example. Riley reaching around. Well, I think that what Michigan has got to do now against this zone to get the ball to the top of the key, start going back down to their high-low post offense. And now, in this particular case, they've got Riley down in, on the inside. They can use him. He's a good passer. Juwan Howard is likewise. Then get it inside, then go back out. They are not going to be effective surrounding the Temple zone. Jalen Rose is back in for Vosco. That was the second foul on Riley, only the fourth on Michigan. And final seconds of the first half. And check what Temple has started doing at the very beginning of this game is to put four guys on one side of the floor and one on the other. And then take them one on one. It's occupying the clock and making it very difficult for Michigan to double team anywhere. Brunson 
Kings hand, remember, blocked by King. And tipped out of bounds by Howard. It belongs to Temple. Great job by Jimmy King coming to help back. But Brunson's got that left hand coming across the lane. with able to almost get that shot off, and there's that block by King. Got a fingertip on yep. it. Otherwise, probably was going down for two. Shot clock at eight seconds. There's he gets great it off. Jalen before the half, the runner brings it down to a single-digit deficit. But Michigan is in trouble. Temple closes the half on an 11-4 run. So the score at halftime, Temple 35, Michigan 27. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Cheney went out with the two fouls. I'll answer the question. Any uh, possible embellishment of that? You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! I see Bailey. The image is fading. Information will be given on a need-to-know basis. Do we have a ruling? Hoo-ah! To get what his heart wants most means living this day over again till he gets it right. I studied 19th century French poetry. <laughs> What a waste of time. I study 19th century French poetry. La fille qui j'aime la. You speak French. Oui. I have to finish about four or five papers today. Planned on doing it all last night, and then we won. Within five minutes, a thousand people on our front lawn in the street, and there's nothing that could be done. Well, there are a thousand people on my front lawn, and I politely asked them to leave because I pointed out to them I came to this university to study. Basketball Championship Regional Final Game is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, and performance are never optional. The new Top Flight Magna, it's not just a new ball, it's a whole new game. And by McDonald's, what you want is what you get, guaranteed at McDonald's today. It has been a weekend full of sunshine, but Temple right now trying to cloud the final four hopes of the Michigan Wolverines. Billy, how about the Wolverine shot selection in the first half? Well, the shot selection has been fine, not much on the perimeter, but you see they're getting nothing in their high-low. All the baskets are down inside. They're 12 for 20, 28, and Jim, they got to be thankful for Eric Riley because Riley came in in this 3 for 3 from the inside. All right, Billy, so it's 35-27 Temple here at halftime, and let's get a report now from Leslie Visser at courtside. Leslie? Jim, the Temple coaches are in concurrence with you and Billy. They say that they are pleased they've been able to stop Temple, as Jim Maloney, the assistant, says, where they live, collapsing on Weber, giving up the outside shot. They said they will not extend the Temple zone unless Jimmy King or somebody gets really right. hot out there. The Michigan coaches, they're looking oh, for a little man. more patience, a few more passes before they put the ball up. Jim? Temple has first possession of the second half, Leslie. Leading by eight. Largest lead of the first half. In the closing seconds, they got it to 10. Getting all of their scoring, or most of their scoring, Billy, from three players. Now yeah, that's been true the entire tournament. 77% today, 27 to 35 points from Brunson, McKee, and Jones. And Jones really hasn't been uh, uh, that much of a factor today, but you know he has the ability to explode. Averaging over 20 points a game in March. 
You heard Mike Francesa talk about it back in our studio in New York. But Jones set out good part of the second half, or first half, with foul trouble, two fouls. Now here's the first whistle of the second stanza goes against Ray Jackson. And Jim, you know, Aaron McKee, just such a great scorer, been very patient today. But when you look down at the, at the stats, he's got 13 points. You know, on target to go over his average. We mentioned the Atlantic 10 player of the year and also the leading scorer in the league. Great player to watch. Temple had only one free throw opportunity in the first half, a grand total of four in the game by the two teams. Well, and let's look at this situation now. John Cheney said, no, I want to be back and with all my defenders. So he pulls all of his four guys off the line. Brunson will be there all by himself. And obviously everybody gets a chance to rest and have that zone in place when Michigan comes to attack. Friday night, Temple trailed Vanderbilt by six at halftime and then just exploded in this half. And John Cheney told us afterwards, Billy, that coming west, we haven't gotten used to the time differential. Well, unlike a lot of teams, Temple has made the effort to get back to school on the west coast. Weber puts it away. The basket by Chris Weber. After playing in Salt Lake City last week, Temple flew back to Philadelphia and the kids attended classes Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Not everyone chooses to operate that way when they're sent west. Exactly. And there are these clear outs. The key, nice hands by Jalen Rose. It Rose be a hit ahead to Howard. Yep. Rose streaks in. Right back is the key. They have a three on two. Brunson, beautiful look away pass. Over the back is McKee. McKee riding the back of Jimmy King. All right, Brunson did a great look away for the pass that time and then kept it himself for the layup. I think he didn't realize that he's going to be that wide open. Just a great fake. Nine steals to only one. Now let's talk about Michigan. They've been in this position already in the tournament. They trailed by 19 against UCLA, including 13 down at halftime to the Bruins, Billy, a week ago today. And there's Cunningham picking up that foul. Now John Cheney doesn't want that kind of foul because he'd like that big guy to occupy as much space as possible and have Ivy be able to come in down the stretch where he's a much more productive offensive player. Second on Cunningham. Brunson was underneath for Temple. I think Chris Weber dodged the bullet there. He had a nice, easy bounce pass to Ray Jackson on the weak side, which could have been an easy layup. Ten-point lead is down to six. Three-point firing. Weber battling. Tips it to King. Michigan on a mini run. We haven't seen many fast break opportunities for Michigan, and there's a great slice and move by Jalen Rose. And the reason for that, Temple gets back on defense so well. Rose has six points. Six unanswered out for the Wolverines. They cut it to four. Second time, Rose been able to knock that ball away from the key. Jones with a floater. for the steal, setting Rose free for the three-point shot. Michigan within three. You know, they count it as a two, Billy. They had a foot on the line. 39-35, simple. He does not go out to set the solid screen to Jones. And Jenny has him stationed right down on the block. Jones with players around him everywhere, and he picks up the air ball. Never touched by Michigan. I don't think it was touched at all either, Jim. Do you? I didn't think so. I, Janey thought it may have grazed the Wolverine. Jim, Jones is so graceful in the air that I think his double clutching uh, got that shot off without it being touched. Of course, he would like for it to have been touched. Maybe he is a little bit too gifted to that man. Team able to get many fast breaks going off rebounds. Jones, big step to the hole, and tripped on the way in by Jackson. 
when we talk about fouls, and this Temple team has been incredible in the NCAA tournament. Coming into today's game, they went to the line 79 times. Their opponents went to the line 17 times. Of course, that zone defense helps, but they've been aggressive with the zone. It's incredible, and again, that includes only one trip to the line for Vanderbilt on Friday night. Today, that was a foul by Rose on McKee's arm. Would have been a three-shot situation. Today, each team has attempted three free throws. The ball. Jones, foul shot, tipped in by McKee. Now Michigan spent three players to try to stop Jones on that baseline. Therefore, there was nobody there to rebound. Weber not able to touch the ball. Look at how that zone's packing around him down inside. He has three men so far. Howard pops it to him. The basketball Good pass Weber. by Jawan Howard, and Weber slams home two more. Simple by four. Jimmy had three men on him. With Cunningham out of there. Do you notice how Ivy not quite big enough? Even though they had three bodies around him down the low, they still got it over the top. Switch off, leaving Ivy open. Weber stacks the rebound. Good hit and wants the break. Back to the middle of Jackson. In the air. Score the basket. He'll go to the line. John Cheney would like to save timeouts if he can feel the run coming right here. He's awful small. He says, I'll go back with Cunningham. Nice job by Ray Jackson to play under control as he went down the lane. Didn't give any opportunity whatsoever for Ivy to draw the charge. And Ivy commits his third. There he is. Slices right through. That was a great hit ahead by Weber. Good passing by Michigan. William Cunningham has come back in for Ivy. Jackson 64% for the year. Missing that one. Weber stirs it up inside. And a big trip for Michigan. The Wolverines, having been 10 down, have now tied it. Tied at 41. Really showing some good maturity here as Michigan. And again, it's just a sophomore ball club, but they're playing like a bunch of veterans in this half. And they've stepped it up on this end of the floor. Jones draws the two-shot foul against Ray Jackson. I believe that's the third of Jackson for Jackson in this half. But Jackson has really exploded in the NCAA tournament. Scored 19, the first time he ever led Michigan since he's been at Michigan in scoring in the Coastal Carolina game. 19 in his first two games. Came into this game shooting 19 and 28 from the floor. 19 is his career high, too. He matched it in those first two games. Rob Polinka, the only Michigan player. Jackson will sit with the three fouls. Polinka, the only player who dressed the night of the championship game when Michigan defeated Seton Hall here in 1989. Took the players back to the locker room this week. Told them stories about how Glenn Rice had shown great leadership and helped rally his team together to a national title. He showed two things in that tournament. Great leadership and incredible three-point shooting. William Cunningham, his third. Temple foul, number 33, William Cunningham. That's his third. Good steal there, those great power hands of Weber inside. Great composure to put it back up. The intensity of Weber. The thing of beauty, isn't it? When he gets it going, breaking the action, we'll be right back. Here's a look at your final four brackets. Just waiting for one more entry, Michigan or Temple. And you look at the teams, Billy, North Carolina, Kansas, and Kentucky. What tradition? But Jim, something could happen. Four teams from a state name could get to a Final Four for the first time in the history of the NCAA. From a... So there's state names, you know, like North Carolina, okay. Kentucky. Well, William Cunningham has just been whistled for his fourth foul. Kansas, and of course, we're talking about Michigan if they continue to play the way they are here in the second half. This is a huge problem right now for John Cheney. The reason for it is Cunningham was anchoring that zone defense down inside and prevented some of those high-low passes from taking place. With four, that means he's got to come back with Ivy, which basically has been his entire bench throughout this tournament. We talked about Temple. Not a lot of room on the bench to come back with anything, Ivy being the only one, so that short bench could hurt him here. One more for the lead for Weber. He was saying yesterday how I feel not like a 20-year-old, but like a 20-year veteran, like the chief, Robert Parrish. 
Now I look frustrated, even mean sometimes when I look at the tapes. If I can only get back to that usefulness of a year ago. Yep, and he said uh, he wants basketball, if he's not going to get paid for it, to be fun. And it isn't right now. Does that mean that he now wants to get paid? I think if they win a championship this year, I think he'll go. Anything short of that, and I think they're all back. I think he'd be drafted higher than Luther Wright. <laughs> Although Luther went out on the limb, huh? Yep. Jones off the glass, puts Temple back ahead by one. Jones is so gifted with that gliding jump shot ahead. But look at how small that Temple zone is. I really think that Michigan ought to pop it down inside now, right over the top of it, to force Temple to try to go with him on the board. We've got two players in the area of Weber at all times, right? See, there they go down inside. Oh. It's there. I was unable to handle it. How about this beautiful gliding shot? Actually, he's so gifted with that play. Talk about an NBA type move. Oh boy, he's he, really smooth. And here's his counterpart, McKee, taking this man one on one. Temple 43 42, 13 minutes remaining. McKee pump faking. Short on the jumper. Weber coming up with some big rebounds. He led the Big Ten in rebounding this year. For the second year in a row. King missing a kick by Howard. Follow up. Then Temple right now is just too small. Oh, Michigan could even take the situation to say, put up shots from the outside and just go get them on the board. King puts it up. There's an example. Put it up on the boards and then just go after it. Got Juwan Howard in there with no foul trouble. He got in foul trouble in the last game against GW and fouled out. But he's got no problems with fouls. Neither does Weber. And, of course, Riley gave him a big lift in the first half with three for three from the field. by McKee, but foul called on Palenka with the bump. Palenka, recalling Michigan the leadership of Rice in 89, uh, made his, his team first kind first of submit to a, a vow of boredom for the tournament before the NCAA. And of course, it wasn't boredom for the guy that was named interim coach during that whole period, Steve Fisher. With this team, he wanted the foul. Oh, he wanted to anything thing. but boring on the floor. Oh, no, no. Make the foul otherwise. Just go out and have some fun. Let it go. Let it fly. There's that clear out again. Michigan doing a better job helping out from the weak side. He great. blocked by Weber, and he breaks the head. Great D by Weber against a really gifted swingman. Keep driving. Michigan lead by three, 46-43. Now, the other thing, when you're a zone team primarily, you don't want to get behind by much, because if you have to change, you go out and play man-to-man -man and do some chasing, it really takes away from the thing that caught you here, which is that solid zone defense. Oh, the hell, man! Oh, 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 nice oh, right under there. Bob Palenka again. Called for the foul, his second. Teams will head to the bench. Michigan, having trailed by as many as 10, now leads by three. Look at the field goal percentages in this half. Michigan, 64%. Weber helping ignite the Wolverines with 11 points and nine rebounds. Jim, I think the real problem is sitting on the bench, or what's lack of sitting on the bench for John Cheney. He has no size to put in with Cunningham having those four fouls on him. He's going to have to go with the club that's out there. Jones, jumper. Into the hands of Howard. No points off the bench in this game for Temple. Ten points off the bench for Michigan. The T started so well scoring down in low for Temple. Now he's down there with Weber. Nice reverse pivot by Chris Weber. Howard couldn't get him the ball. Rose with an air ball from three-point land. Steve Fisher upset with Jalen Rose. Looked at him very sternly, and Jalen smiling. 
but he doesn't want to be smiling here because they wanted to get that ball down inside. You know, sometimes when he smiles, you think he's really crying, you know, on the inside. Another great block by Weber. Hit from behind by Jimmy King. King's first. And with those blocks by Weber in this half, Michigan has eclipsed what was the school record for shot blocks last year at 182. They are now over that figure. And T will shoot two. You're a young man who visited Kansas, Arizona State, and then made his mind up that he wanted to go to Temple. And he called up John Cheney and said, when are you coming to pick me up? I'm ready to go to Temple. <laughs> they went down to, to sign him in his bedroom. He had made up just a, how many would you say, Billy? They were talking about dozens of Temple hats around the room. Maybe those are some of those that we showed earlier today. Yeah, that's why there's right? such a short supply that's outside. Right. Let's see if Jalen looks inside this time down the floor as opposed to throwing up a three. Michigan by two. Howard's posting up right on the foul line is where they can get the ball to Juwan Howard and then dish down inside. There he is, and here's the dish. Howard ducks step to the hole, throws underneath. He too has a great size advantage when he goes inside, and he draws the foul on Fatigue. Jim, there's the situation that we're talking about. Get the ball right down on that foul line to Howard. He's got so many things he can do from there. That time, Weber happened to be outside. The dish was available for Juwan, but he just go, went ahead and put up the little short jumper. Riley back in. He had a good first half. Riley. Number 30. In for Weber. Riley had seven points in the first half. Jim, we talked about John Cheney getting to three regional finals now with Cunningham coming back in and so far has not been successful in any. How about Kansas? They're in a situation where they've gone to the final four the last six times they've made it to a regional final. 71, 74, 86, 88, 91, and now Roy Williams brings them back in 93. And some people forget they've been to four of the last eight final fours. Yep. Yeah. Four since 86. Now, Jalen Rose, who had his best game of the year, Billy, against Kansas over in Hawaii. Michigan won that game over in the island. A great stretch of games that they had, beating Nebraska. When you look back at it now, it's even a better stretch. Nebraska, North Carolina, and then Kansas. Two teams that have made it to the Final Four. They beat him back-to-back days. Michigan starting to really get quick on defense now. Double team. The team. Ooh, Jones came flying through. I don't think... I don't think that shot of fatigue was going to drop anyway. Here we see the young man is staying active. Now there's that double team from the weak side that Michigan does so well against low post offense. You can't be aware with Jones coming across, it wouldn't have counted. Jackson back in, so Jackson, King, and Rose matching up really well today with Brunson. Two shots, fellas! Jones and McKee. Yeah. Midway through the second half. That's a 57 free throw shooter. Vanderbilt right now saying at home, I yeah. wish he shot him like this on Friday night. That's right, we mentioned he uh, made 4-4 four four in the last 39 seconds to steal it. He's going to be a fine player, though. Now it's Riley and Howard in that high-low post. Howard finds Jackson open. Tim, it's there all day. And he's such a great passer from up there on the top of the key. Brunson with a big time three. That changed the lead from six to three. Fourteen for Brunson. The young man who last year only shot 32% from the floor is really turning to the year. Look at Ray Jackson. In with the Giants. And is that it for William Cunningham? Well, they let's see. That is. That is. He has fouled out. Yep. Ten minutes to go. Obviously, 
obviously a big, big problem for John Kane. He did not score in this game, but he was a factor in the first half. He was that, and, and let's point out for John Cheney, when he was struggling earlier in the year, he had Frazier Johnson, a 6'9", 249-pounder in the middle. He had an academic difficulty and, of course, no longer with the team, so that would have certainly helped his club in a game like this one. Number 20, seeing his first action at the regional, Chris Osmond. Top four from Wilburn, Georgia. Into the Wolverine Two shots for Ray Jackson. Michigan has Ray returned Weber to the floor. That's where Riley is so effective, Jim, coming off that bench. I mean, they lose nothing with his great experience. Ron Howard sits down, or Weber sits down to get a blow. You just have that nice three-man rotation in there. Four-point Michigan edge, 51-47. Winner advances to New Orleans to face Kentucky. Jackson defense. That's a steal for Michigan. Set up by Jackson. He drills it to the corner to Rose. Now feeds Weber. Weber. Oh, very good. Wasn't he? But Osmond gets the rebound. I really think that Weber kind of forced that shot up a little bit. It was a possible move. Tell he really wanted to go up with it. Jones. step out there way beyond the college three-point line. McKee. Weak side had McKee on him. McKee no factor against the seven-foot Riley. Riley with nine. Brunson. Trio from the outside and making an interesting. Brunson may have heard you mention the other two guys can shoot it from way out. He comes down the floor and drills a long one. Oh, not, not a good shot. You know, Michigan has kind of gotten rattled a little bit with those threes that got him in that situation. And Riley bumps into Osmond. It'll be a one and one. That's the third on Riley. We Temple, this only was down six, and now they have a chance to take the lead. Now, Jim, we talk about Temple defense, Temple defense, but what really turned them around here was perimeter offense. And Michigan tried to come back so quickly, Chris Weber took two probably ill-advised shots down on the baseline. Osmond will shoot a one-and-one. One. He attempted only ten free throws all season. Four for ten. Well, how about as a team? Only 64%. Temple takes the one-point lead. Kind of, you see Rose came over to give him a little heat. Osmond strokes it in there and taps Rose on the backside like, son, get back where you belong. Under eight minutes remaining. Michigan trying to become the third number one seed to make it to New Orleans. That would be the first time ever three one seeds made it to the final four. Rose drops. Put that away. Boy, look at the quickness of Jones all the way from the weak side. Way up. And a break in the action. The Owls lead by one. All championship on CBS. Some of the vital statistics. Michigan has the arrow. They all... All three timeouts remain for each team. And Billy, for a moment there, I thought Michigan was about to put this game away. I know the lead was only six, but they had the signs of maybe making that run to the knockout. Well, they really did. The thing that brought it back, obviously, is three-point shooting. And what Temple did is extended Michigan's man-to-man -man with Brunson hitting two and Jones hitting one from way out. Michigan got a little bit too impatient on the offensive end of the floor when they were ready to make that knockout blow, Jim. Sure that's what Steve Fisher talked to him about during that timeout. Weber too strong off the glass. Temple has possession and the one-point lead. Seven minutes remaining. Chris Weber better get back down court. No challenge for McKee one-on-one -on -one with a dribble.
Desmond now setting screens. He'll set some pretty good screens out the top. There's the weak side double team. Jones, he doesn't care if people are draped on him. Weber with the rebound. Three on one. Jackson gets it back. It's tipped. Belongs to Michigan. So yeah. Temple able to save a break. Uh, well, great defensive balance by the Temple team. It was a three-on-one situation as they crossed half court, but then the Temple kids really got back with their defensive balance to cover up what could have been an easy layup for Michigan. Jackson gives it up inside. Ah, Weber on, can't baby. get it to drop. Rose follows. Michigan has taken it to one basket by Jalen Rose. And here's where they're so tough, Jim. We talked about the UCLA putback. The North Carolina put back when it went to from King and Rose put it there. They're just so big on the weak side rebounding. Tough to keep them off the board. Eddie Jones lost it. Jackson Burns. Yeah, he spins away. Howard elects to take it. And Desmond comes back for the rebound. Twice Michigan had three on one breaks and couldn't convert. Osmond off the bench with three boards and a foul outside. Well, you know what happened? They just let Jawan Howard keep on dribbling. He wanted to make the pass, but there was nobody open. That's as fine a defensive situation. Brunson, watch Brunson. See, he holds his ground, holds his ground, fakes at him. There was nothing for Jawan Howard to do except pull up and take that jumper. Great job by Brunson on the back end. And a third on Howard. In a one and one, McKee ties it at 55. Junior from Philadelphia grew up just a matter of blocks away from the Temple campus. Temple wanting to get back to the Final Four for the first time in 35 years. Has the one-point lead, 56-55. He really using his body down there, playing Chris Weber like it's a man for man. Interior passing at Howard. It's Michigan. Basketball. Up by one. Sometimes you wonder why Michigan doesn't continue just to go high-low, high-low. And so Temple has to pack down so far that Jimmy King and Jackson can get either easy jumpers from the foul line. Look at this long-range three. McKee and Weber with his 11th rebound. Billy, you can look at the clock. Five minutes to go. Michigan leads by one. They have not lost the game this year when they're leading at the five-minute mark. Jimmy King at that point. Jimmy and Nyoka King. Jimmy King Sr. They came in from Plano, Texas. Hello, back home. Your son just put Michigan ahead by three. They are now at a five-minute mark with the lead, and they are 29-0 when they're in that position. And Temple calls a timeout. Tonight, followed by Murder, She Wrote, and the CBS Sunday movie, The Man with Three Wives. You can see Osmond setting big screens out here now, 30 feet from the basket, trying to free up Brunson. Players all over, Jones on the baseline, travel. That was great defense by Chris Weber. Held his ground, the key had no place to go. And now, full court pressure by Temple. Trying to turn something over here. They have done so well in the course of this tournament. They beat the uh, clock by seconds. about what, yeah. two seconds. One. Jackson's good pump. Man. Well, we mentioned the other day, a lot of people last year talked about the Fab Four plus one. Without question, Ray Jackson has become a very integral part of this team. Broke his collarbone this year against North Carolina out in the Rainbow Classic. Hindered his play for missed eight games there, but certainly playing super basketball in the NCAA tournament. And with this free throw, he can give one shot. Michigan the six-point lead. Would tie their largest margin. And he does. Steve Fisher over there with a 15-2 NCAA tournament coaching record. Ready to extend that. Obviously the best of active coaches now. Brunson. I think Fisher likes coming to Seattle. 
Well, I mean, he enjoyed himself the last time he marched through to the national championship with that overtime win. Here's the block. He was telling us when he came here for the 84 Final Four, he couldn't find his credential, had to get a security guard to let him in, and he said in the absolute last row, upper deck. Well, when you're an assistant coach, those things happened back in 84. Michigan has scored the game's last seven points. Of course, that's the last time that Kentucky was to a Final Four, right? And they uh, came in here, and Georgetown really put a defensive hurt on them that time. Kentucky came into that Final Four much like the way they're playing in this tournament. Now, I'm making you back up on that. I don't know if any Kentucky teams play. That's true. This. A T. Oh, two on the shot clock, and they call the foul on Weber. Takes away a possible break by Michigan. Possible, Jim. Yeah, they had that. two men all by themselves. Michigan foul. And what Chris Weber thinks, that's his fourth foul, is that the hand is part of the ball. You see Weber come. He's come up with some great defensive plays in this half. Here he comes down. Boom. Boy, all ball. I don't see that. All ball. All ball. Violence, but all ball. But T today only one of five from the line. You know, you, you were talking about Seattle. It actually has been part of four Final Fours. We had, of course, the one that we know about with Michigan winning. And they had Georgetown winning in 84. Back in 52, Kansas won here. Pete Smith Kentucky. on that team. Yep, and Kentucky won in 1949. Beat Oklahoma State. So you think about it, this year's Final Four could have a real tie to history with Seattle with Michigan gets there. Michigan having won in 89. Dean Smith on the Kansas team in 82. And Kentucky in 49. Weber. Oh, forget that one. You see at least one of those, it seems like, in game, Billy. Uh, just, and he, he has, in, in my mind, and, and thinking back over time, as strong a pair of hands as I've seen in the low post in college basketball. When he gets it down there, you better be planning. Stolen by Rose. He read it all the way. Being following. Whoa! And the fan follows his back. And Jalen winks as he runs down the floor. That was a beautiful pass. They're having fun now. That was Michigan of a year ago, Billy. Yep, they're having fun now. Steal by Weber. McKee somehow comes out with it. 2.20 to go. Owls trail by eight. Brunson. Oh, that was not a smart play by Jalen. Brunson has got has already released the three. He'll and shoot he knocked, three. Yeah, he'll put him on the line for three. Stops the clock. There was a steal by Jalen. Great eye contact with King and puts it up there perfectly for Jimmy King to finish it away. Look at the eye contact. There's the lob. And Jimmy King, the great finish. The Kentucky connection here with Jimmy King and, of course, Ray Jackson. But Jalen wasn't thinking on that defensive play. John Chaney and Temple have called a timeout. They have one remaining. Two minutes, 19 seconds to go. They're thinking about New Orleans, trying to get there. Owls headed to the line for three free throws. Have only one timeout left, trailing by eight as Michigan has gone to an 11 to one run. Billy gone off on an 11 to one run. That's been the difference. Tim, what you've got to go to strategy here now is Temple. You're going to have to pick up full court, maybe even have to go out and chase a little man-to-man -man, man -man situation. And you've got to think about following now. Remember, Michigan has a team, just a 64% free throw shooting team. But that's the strategy John Chaney has to employ. And look at how important these three fouls could be. You know, Jalen Rose in a situation, the shot did not go in. Michigan would have had the ball, had themselves up by eight. Now they find themselves just up six. Hey, that was they it. They only gave Brunson two free throws. Are they saying that it was after the shot? They had to say it was after the shot because no question he was a good two feet outside of the arc. Now the rule on that is if a man shoots a jump shot, the jump shot ends when the man's feet Temple hit the floor, not when the shot is released out of his hand. But without question, he was a long way from the basket, way beyond the three-point arc. Everything's two. Everything the rest of the way is two. You heard that from one of the officials. Both teams over the 10-foul limit, so two coming for Rose. 
Mitch, and that certainly helps the poor free throw shooting team as opposed to the one and one. I mean, you know you're going to get that second shot and get yourself in some kind of a rhythm. Take the pressure off of it. But still, the strategy that John Cheney has to employ the rest of the way here. Tipped away by Jones. Down seven. Two minutes to go, Billy. Yeah, they don't have to go for threes right away. A deep pull-up jumper. Gets it to five. And here comes the press. Man-to-man, <laughs> -man, pressing. And there's the foul. So now the strategy is obvious. Temple foul. And they can burn it at the line. That's right. His first. And Jim, you know, we, we mentioned uh, Kentucky, and you said before, uh, you know, maybe that club back in 84 playing as good as this one. This team is averaging 10 points. Uh-oh, technical foul called against the Temple bench. Really, that's a killer right there. Oh, boy, you talked about a killer. Check Two the shots foul. and Temple the ball bench. back. And the free throws they still have to clean sure. up. John Cheney cannot believe it. Remember his great stare down up in Hartford? You'll see more in a stare down here. That's going to be Ray Jackson, two shots. Well, with two free throws, two more coming, and possession. Could be game, set, match, and point, Billy, yep. off of a technical foul. John is still staring. Jim, I was talking about Kentucky. In this tournament, they're averaging 10 points more than normal. And they're shooting 37% from three-point Jackson made only one of two. Now two coming for Rose. John Cheney has not moved. He's got his one foot out of the coaching box, too. I think he's going to slide back there. I'm sure that's not the... So Michigan leads by eight and has possession. Temple hanging back. Michigan's not going to take that ball to the basket. They're going to have to come out and pick up everybody. There they go. Rose will go right back to the charity line. And they wasted, did Temple, 10 seconds Temple doing foul. what they knew they had to do in the first second, which is a box. John Cheney, one of his favorite slogans, Be the Dream. For a while today, it looks like his dream of a trip to the Final Four might come true. Not over yet, 136 remaining. Wolverines by nine, and one more free throw to come. Now, Jim, he has turned Temple now into a national program, and he said he did that by going out and scheduling anybody that would play him, playing on the road to get that exposure necessary for people to know who you are, and of course, kids around the country do know that now. And he said, as a coach, however, it's tough to do that unless you know that you have the security of your job. He certainly has a temple. That was a five-point trip yep, for Michigan. Now, Michigan does not want to foul here. Oh, they do, though. Brunson will go to the line, and that's the one thing you don't want to do if you're Michigan. Let them have the wide-open jumper. Foul called on Jimmy King. And they're giving him three shots at the line. Brunson. Well, we're hearing now that the official word on that technical foul was called against John Cheney. Right. And, there it, and it was for using profanity. There's a new technical foul rule this year with that in mind, Billy. Yep. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we come back. Michigan has called the timeout this time, leading by nine. 29. Michigan and Seton Hall, the final shot for Seton Hall in overtime. And the Wolverines under Steve Fisher, then an interim coach, win the national championship. That was the 1500th game played in the history of this NCAA tournament. Jim, you talked about that unsportsmanlike 
the technical against the coach and as you know that has been a point of emphasis this year in regard to trying to clean up any kind of language whatsoever but it was not a great demonstration in any kind by John Cheney just something that he said eight point lead one point to go and if you're gonna foul and I guess John Cheney's decided not to and I don't know why you got to foul early see there's a, another case they wasted a good 10 12 seconds Look at now a little bit of talking going on between the 221s, Jones and Jackson. Third Jim on Jones. Jones. And Jim, Jim talking about cleaning up some things. Do you think there'll be any uh, move down in New Orleans to clean up Kansas's act of spitting in the Mississippi River? <laughs> <laughs> you know they're going to do that. Sanitation departments out looking for Roy Williams Club, which they started they say back in 1982 with the North Carolina team that won a national championship. Dean Smith took down there. And Roy was uh, an assistant. How about Kansas and Carolina? A rematch from the national semifinals a couple of years ago. Right. Dean Smith and Roy Williams get another crack at one another. And I'm sure that uh, Coach Smith would like to coach this entire game as opposed to that one where he made an exit. 63-64. And Michigan doing a good job right now. Coming out, not falling, but putting a lot of pressure on the ball, making it tough. Jones, three-pointer. Slices it to six. And Temple has used its last timeout. 73-67. A minute to go. Championship basketball. Starting with the NCAA Women's Final Four. Next Saturday on CBS Sports. Let's look at the conference affiliation for the teams headed to New Orleans. ACC, Big 8, SEC, and the Big 10 a minute away. There's the quick foul. Jim, you know, it's something interesting. This year, the ACC was 98 and 20, including NCAA tournament Jimbo play against Bowl, outside competition. They were number one. The Big 10 was number two, 99 and 27. The Big 8 was number three with 95 and 28 and the sec has really climbed up in recent weeks although they were fifth during the year they were a hundred against 42 losses during that period of time. so obviously shows the quality of those power leagues two shots for jimmy king first attempts of the day well, people at michigan will forever remember that put back with a winning shot against UCLA. I know these folks will. Jimmy King Sr. rising, but he made the big save at the end of regulation in that game, too. Yep. McKee missing, tipped in by Petit. Now remember, with no timeouts left, this game is shortened by a number of seconds because Temple can't stop the clock. Howard wisely calling a timeout. Needed some help. Michigan left with one timeout.
You'd never know, would you? I mean, does Mr. Bosco look like his son? That's another son that's in nuclear engineering at the University of Michigan. Hail to the victors. It's not over yet. Michigan 44 seconds away from setting up a very elite grouping in New Orleans. And while we look at this date of March the 28th, I'm going to pass along a happy anniversary to your old partner, Al McGuire, who's on this date, 1977, when Al won the national championship over North Carolina. Still remember him sitting there crying as the final ticks came down. Ian Hanks and Rick Majerus, Hank Raymond, and Rick Majerus, great staff at Marquette. Quite a win. Weber Lee. Weber comes back to help, and Howard will go to the line. McKee said, wait a minute, didn't he travel first? Jim, what's so difficult against a press like this is that John Chaney has taken the chance to say, hey, look, they're not going to go long. So he has put all five of his defenders on this end of, uh, on this half court. So consequently, what Michigan's got to be thinking about is say, hey, with this kind of lead, let's one time just throw over those five men and get an easy layup. Otherwise, it makes it very difficult to handle the ball in such tight confines. Two shots for Jawan, 0 for 1 from the line today. Remember, Temple does not have a timeout remaining. Steve Fisher has one in his pocket. Wade Temple can fire up a oh, yeah. three, hey, though. Hey. They surround you with three. Ivy, not bad either. Makes it a three-possession game, minimum. Seven-point lead. A good idea to pick up full court, make Temple take some time off the clock. Nice job by Jimmy King. That's three. Deep on rebound. Ivy gets it back out into the hands of King. Ahead to Weber. Howard trailing. Oh, he missed the dunk. It's a day for missed dunks. Brunson. Ivy drops back, and while he did so, he traveled. Jim, Ivy threw that ball backwards into the hands of not a teammate, but an opponent. Does that remind you of something of New Orleans? The pass to James Worthy, huh? Yep, certainly did. 11 years ago. And we, and we talk about so many things that seem to fall in pattern. We mentioned it the other day. The NCAA has been played here in Seattle. We've got Michigan won the Rose Bowl. They won a Christmas tournament in Hawaii. And they lost to IU in Ann Arbor. And they came here and won a national championship. Well, those three things have happened to them this year as well. They won the Rainbow Classic. Their team won the Rose Bowl. And they lost to IU. McKee has fouled out. Fouled out with 19 points. Saturday's lineup. Women's Final Four, Texas Tech and Vanderbilt, followed by Iowa, Ohio State. First time ever, two teams from the Big Ten getting to the uh, Women's National Championship Final Four. In the road to the Final Four show, followed by the Men's Final Four. This is the order, Kansas, North Carolina first, followed by Michigan, Kentucky. Wow, heavyweights. Now, they really, there's only five seconds left to go in this game. If they cannot obviously win now, they being Temple. Three-point basket mm -hmm. counts. Doesn't have to take it out of bounds. Michigan, it wasn't easy, but the Fab Five is headed back to the Final Four. Seven at the start of this year, and the final four will be four. 77, 7.